We don't know exactly why he's not feeling good. We just know parts are better, but parts aren't as good. And um, I said to him yesterday, I said, do you think maybe you need to go get some fluids because he's not been able to eat. He can drink certain things without throwing up, but he's been doing quite a bit of that. And, um, you know, he said, no, I'll wait till Monday. And if I'm still doing it, I'll call the doctor. So I'm praying that he isn't still doing it because I just, I want to trust God. I want to trust God that when I get home, he's sitting up, able to enjoy his stay. He was able to come to church on Thursday evening, and he did really enjoy being here. He's not always top notch, but you know, I got, got to thinking what it's going to be like when the Lord takes this all away. It's going to be amazing. And you know what? We look forward to that day. Um, but I'm trusting God. And like I've, I taught the kids in Bible school, not my will, but thine be done, Lord. So today, I'm going to bring the word to you. And um, I was thinking about this week and thinking about a title, and I was thinking all these things, and freedom came to my mind. This week is July 4th, if you can believe that already. If you can believe that, you probably can believe it's 179 days till Christmas. <laughs> but, you know, we all sit, even children, and say how time is going so fast in our lives. But my sermon today is on freedom. And, of course, my sermon's on freedom to worship freedom to worship God. I couldn't help but to think today, no computers, no, you know, flashy things, but we don't need that. We don't need that to serve our God. Yes, we are so used to the words being up there, and we're so used to the bulletins being up there, and to the other thingy jigger they put up there, and I couldn't even turn the computer on in the office today. I did I pushed a couple buttons. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. Do, do I need this? Are you hearing me okay? I pushed a couple buttons. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you the way it is. Nothing happened. Well, I think a light flash maybe. And I'm thinking, because Bobby has walked me through it, and I'm thinking, I can do this. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. If you need to know what's going on, just ask me. I got it on my phone, my little... Uh, my little announcement page. But you know what? I'm prepared. I'm, I was unprepared, but now I'm prepared because the Lord gave me something for you today. I want to talk about freedom. As we know, the freedom that we have in this country. You know, um, there are days when you turn the news on. I usually just turn it on and mute the parts I don't want to listen to. But there are days that you listen to the news and you look around you and you think, and so the other day, um, I turned the news on because I like to watch the weather. And whether it not, it's right, it's okay, because I just like to watch it. <laughs> but here is these, the president and, and the past president talking, and of course I muted it. And I thought to myself, you know, I don't want to watch this because I didn't want to hear what they were. I didn't want to hear arguing. I didn't want to hear stuff. I'm not a political person. I'm going to just tell you that. And I don't think the Pope is any place to be bringing up politics and discussing them. But when Bobby woke up and he came out, he sat down. I'd already turned the news off. He turned it back on. And I said, listen, I'm going to tell you this right now. You don't even want to listen to the news today because it's discouraging to me so many deaths and so many this and so many that and I knew that the presidents had been on there and I just said I don't think you want to watch it today do you know he pretty much took my advice <laughs> chalk one up for me right <laughs> but how many times are we guilty of getting ourselves into situations that we have no freedom to get out of you know what there are times that when people start talking that I just have to walk away because I don't want to be involved in their negativity. I don't want to be involved in the language they might be using. I don't want to be involved in any of it because you know what would happen? Number one, I don't want to hear it. But number two, somebody would say, oh, yeah, do you see Sister Bonnie over there talking to them? You know what they're talking about. And I might be innocent standing there. My Bobby used to tell our kids, 
you are guilty by association. So we want to be in a place that we have freedom, right? To bring up God's name. I'm going to tell you right now, you have that freedom. God gave you that freedom. I'm going to read a scripture to you. And let me, let me give you this first. Freedom. Being who God made you to be without being influenced by the things that hold you in bondage to things that are harmful. How many of you have ever felt like you were held in bondage over something? I, I, don't, care, I don't care what it is. It, whether it be a drug, an alcohol, whether it be money, whether it be perfectionist, Sister Kathy. <laughs> when she said, are you organized? I'm thinking, oh my, no. I'm not going to tell you how much time this week I searched for something and it wasn't even the right thing. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't find it either. <laughs> but when I found out what I was really looking for, I couldn't find that either. But anyway... <laughs> I want to talk to you about the freedom to serve God. You know what? I can go into Walmart, and if I want to walk up to somebody and say, um, are you okay? You know, I will pray for you. I can do that. Maybe the manager might not like it. Maybe in some places, leaders might not like it. But you know what? God loves it. And who are we here to please? We're here to please God. Don't put yourself in this box and say, okay, I can go here, I can go here. I'd like them mimes. I can go here, I can go there, but I can't get out of my box. Get out of your box. Because I'm telling you, the word of God needs to be spread all over. I'm going to tell you a little story since Rory's not up here. The other day, he told me people were from animals. I said, no, they aren't. You know, this is Grammy. Yes, they are. I said, they are not. And of course, he's, yes, they are. So finally, I got him captive in the car. <laughs> he couldn't get out. I said, Rory, where like, did you hear this? And I think it had something to do with school or scientists and all. He's telling me about these scientists and things. And I said, well, I'm going to tell you something. So I had just watched a minister tell the story that the Bible was printed for the first time on this machine. This machine, the Bible was printed on a Gutenberg machine or something in 1400. So I said, Rory, I'm going to tell you something. The Bible is the true word. It was printed in 1400. Now those words have been passed down is what I'm trying to get to them. 1400, and we still have the Bible today. I said, now you tell me what scientist was alive back in 1400 to know anything that was going on. So Rory, of course, he's, he's pretty sharp. He says to me, I don't like arguing with you. <laughs> but wait till you hear the reason. I said, why, Rory? He says, because you have a good argument. <laughs> so, you know what? It wasn't, I wasn't picking up the Bible saying, Roy, this is the word of God and you better listen to it or you're going to hell or I'm not going to do that. No, you've got to get sometimes off your high horse and realize, you know what? We just need to share God and we have that freedom today. And I'm going to ask you a question. And I don't want you to raise your hand. I don't want you to speak out, but I want you to think about it in your mind. What are you doing with the freedom you have today? Who are you sharing it with? What are you saying? Where are you going with it? Are we just staying in our little box? And if your friend comes over, um, you might say, oh, yeah, I've been praying for you. Or you might look at them and say, well, let me tell you what, you look a whole lot better today, and I know it's because God touched you. We should not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, and there's a scripture about that. But I want to go to John 8 and 36. I'll tell you what, I brought my glasses today. Don't have them. They're back there. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall. Be free indeed. I'm good. I want to tell you what. I like being free. I like the freedom that we have. And no, I'm okay. I, I, it's pretty big. Um, if I start going like this, you better bring them up. Um, 
I love the freedom I have today. I love the freedom that I can step out on my porch and say, thank you, Lord, for this day. I'm very careful raising my hands like this in the house, near the windows, though, because I don't want people to come thinking I'm being held up because <laughs> we're in the country. And, you know, you know, anymore people are just like right away think something's wrong. But I do raise my hands to the Lord in my house. And I raised my hands to the Lord in my heart because the Lord is the ultimate. He is our freedom maker. Anyway, I, um, the sun sets you free. God is liberating us to walk in relationship with him. God, he also created us to be worshipers. He gave us the freedom. I thank God. Things aren't peachy creamy in the world today. We all know that. And the people will say, well, this is happening, that's happening. Yes, it is happening. But God can still give us freedom. The world around us could be just so agitating and irritating, the things that go on. But in my heart, I can feel the freedom of God. And I know that I, I can pray to God, and I know that God hears me because I'm a child of God, and I know he hears me. And the other day, I'll tell you, and I probably have never prayed this prayer before, but the other day I prayed, and I said, Lord, I can't find this thing. I didn't, I didn't stop talking long enough for the Lord to say, well, you're not hunting for the right thing anyway. But I said, I can't find this thing, Lord. But you know what? It's my fault. I put it somewhere, and that's why I can't find it. But if you would, would you help me find it? Well, then the Lord showed me how to find it. Yeah, I'm, I got a send for it, but I found one. And then it made me realize I wasn't looking for the right thing anyway. So what are you looking for? Are you looking, and it's a plug. Are you looking to plug into Jesus? Or are you looking just to live life daily and be happy about it? You know, we look at the world and the things that people have, and they think, this, if I have this, I'm going to be so happy for a while. How about a new car? They only last so long. How about a new boat? If Rick was here, I'd say a fishing pole. But you know what? They only last so long. But with God, joy's there all the time. And joy comes in the morning. Even when we're sad at night, even when we're going through these trials and these things that are going through in our lives, joy comes in the morning. And there's a new morning every day. And I thank God for that. And maybe your morning's not at 7 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock. Maybe your morning's now. And so we have to appreciate and think, God, you gave me freedom. You gave me the freedom to come to you, to worship you, to lift up your name. You gave me the freedom to go to Bible school and work with children and teach other people's children that maybe will never hear the word of God anywhere else. But that's the freedom that we have because God gave it to us. Independence. And if, you know, there's kind of a theme here with July 4th, but independence. Who likes to be independent? We all do, don't we? Independence is freedom from the outside to control you or to support you. Freedom is when you can call the name of God, and not in vain, but you can call on the name of God. One of my little grandchildren said to me, I don't know how to talk to Jesus. We don't know how to do that. So that opened my door to give the opportunity, and she's young, but to say, this is what you say to Jesus. You know what? We've sang that song many a time, to call on the name of Jesus. And I believe that that's all we have to do. The mere, the mere mention of his name. I don't know about you guys, but my grandchildren, you got to call more than once. Usually. Yeah. Usually. And, um, but you call the mere mention of God's name. If you ever watch the Olympics, which I used to watch a little bit more, that's where I got Tatiana's name from when I was 13, was from the Olympics. But these people have prepared and prepared and prepared. If you're a weightlifter, they're lifting weights all the time. They probably walk through the house with gallons of milk. 
whenever they're not at the gym. They probably do all kinds of things. They're probably lifting their legs. You know what? We used to have pastors that could preach, and they would lift their legs and give a kick. What You won't see that much from me, I can tell you that. But you know what? It got them moving. And these runners that run miles and miles and miles, they're preparing their bodies for what is coming. What are we doing? We need to be preparing for our souls for everything that's coming. But what would happen if the day came when the Olympics came into town and they said, eh, I decided I'm not going to do it. I'll wait till next time. I, I don't need to do it today. I'm still in pretty good shape. Well, what good was it? What good was everything they did in their life if they never carried through to the end? Are you getting what I'm going to say? What are we doing as Christians if we are trying to pick and choose what race we want to run? Yeah, I'll go to this person's house, but don't even think I'm going to this person's house. And I'll go to that service because I like that preacher, but don't you think I'm going to listen to that other preacher? What are we doing with our lives? What freedom are we using in those areas? And is it the freedom we should be using? You know, God doesn't make you do things. He gives us choices. And that's a big thing in the world today, too. Everybody thinks, well, in my choice is the choice I want. But you know what? I don't. I want the choice that God has for me. He's given me the freedom to make my own choice, but I could really screw it up. And that's, I don't want that. I want the choice that God gives me. Or, and, you know, back to, not my will, but thine be done, Father. When you think about maybe something you're going to face, and you think, Lord, I don't want to face it. This is not the thing I want to have to deal with today. Do you know that God's there to wrap his loving arms around you and tell you it's okay? We're going to get through this together. Do you know how many times I feel that from God? It's okay. We're going to get through this together because I've had the freedom to worship God. I've had the freedom to pray and I still have that freedom. And you know, there was a story about um, the Ten Boon lady, I Corey, Corey, Corey Ten Boon, that they were put in a prison and that they prayed and that they seek God. And I believe they even had a Bible maybe, but they would come around and they would check out the prison cell, make sure you didn't have something you were not supposed to have that was religious. And they'd never walk in her cell. She had fleas. She had fleas in her cell. And you think, oh my gosh, that'd be awful. <clears throat> yes, it was awful for the people that would have had to go into it that didn't know God. But you know what? It was a blessing to Corey Tin Boone because they stayed out of her cell. And I believe it was a Bible she had in there hidden that they could not take from her. There is a scripture that says, about hiding the word of God in a heart, that we may not sin against God. You know what? That's something we need to do. I read the Bible, I read scriptures, and I remember different scriptures. I'm not good at remind, remembering where they're all found, but I know they're in there. But I do want to read to you Galatians 5 and 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, liberty and the pursuit of happiness, does that sound familiar? Yeah. The pursuit of happiness. God will give you that happiness. He will give you that liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but thy love serve one another. So, that liberty is not just for you, but it's for you to do something with. And what is that? to serve one another. And here as I look through the congregation, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because I know that you all have a heart for other people. I know that you do for other people. But you know the sad reality of it is is there are people out there who don't. And there are people out there who want to pick and choose 
who they do things for. If they have a little bit of money, that's who they'd rather do it for because they might get paid. They might get something special. You might even get left in their will. But you know what? God wants us to help serve all people, no matter where they are, no matter how they live or what they've done. There's a lot of people in jail cells today that have done heinous crimes that are just beyond our belief. But you know what? They have a soul. I heard a person starting to talk about um, those people that are coming into the country, um, whatever you, yeah. And I said, you know what? They have a soul. What should we be doing? Should we be praying, Lord, get them out of here? No, no. We should say, Lord, these people have a soul, and some of them may have never, ever heard of you. Give them, give me the opportunity to witness to these ones that need salvation. You know what? That's what it's all about. Salvation is what it's all about. Worshiping the Lord and asking him forgiveness of our sins. He didn't hang on that cross just because he didn't have nothing else to do that day. He didn't let them put nails in his hands just because he wanted to see, uh, show people how I can handle this. He didn't take the pierce in the side just so he can show them how tough he is. But he did it that we today have the freedom to worship him and share him with other people. And that's what we need to be doing. So I ask you again, what are you doing with the freedom that God has given you? I want to use it for his glory. I love the Lord, and I thank him for everything he's done for us. And I appreciate him. You know what? If somebody were to come and say to me, and I've thought about these things, I, I, I do a lot of thinking. Sometimes it's stinking thinking. Sometimes it's really intelligent thinking. That scares me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you know, sometimes I, I think things, and then I think, Oh, Lord, that was really good, you know? And I don't take the credit for it. God gives it to me. But are we trusting in him? Do we trust the Lord enough to know that when you are put in a situation, when you step out of your box and the Lord puts you in a situation, are we trusting him enough to know, Lord, you led me here. Now you will give me the words to say, he's not just going to take you and hang you like a Christmas bulb off the tree, and eventually, sometimes, those drop. God won't do that to you. He's not going to drop you as long as you keep hanging on and saying, okay, Lord, I'm here. Give me the words to say. Give me the thoughts that I need to think. We are so, um, the world that we live in is so quick to, I hate to use the word judge, but judge. They're so quick to hear something about somebody and write them off. And I want to tell you something. Freedom comes, they say, freedom comes with a price. But let me tell you, the price has been paid. The Lord paid it forward. He already paid for it. He picked up our bill. And I thank God for that. I thank him for his blessings. You know, we can set, and um, I know, uh, and I know Bobby and I have talked many a times. We don't know what the Lord has in store for us. We don't know. We know God's able to heal him completely. I'm looking forward to going home and saying, well, what time do you get up? Because they were praying for you at such and such a time. And, um, but you know what? Whatever the Lord has in store, he'll be with us. He'll give us freedom. He's given us freedom through it. When I get those texts from Claudia, and when I talk to people that have we've been able to witness through through this time that we're going through, I even even with my mom, my mom, she's spunky now. You know, there was a day when I didn't know whether she was going to bounce back. The Lord bounced her back. So last night we were in in a room and um, we had the three little, I had the three little ones with me, and I said, okay, we're going to get in a circle, and we're going to hold hands, and Mimi's going to pray with us. I can't tell you what a blessing that was for me. I thank God for that, 
and he gave my mom freedom to talk. I, I, I've got to tell you this little story, and it's kind of funny, but she was having one of those days that she really didn't like it there. And uh, she let my sister know that she really didn't like it there. And my sister, you know, being a good Christian woman she was, she says, but mom, you maybe, are, you maybe are here for a reason. You maybe are here to witness to these people. So we walk in to the nursing or to the personal care home, and there's this woman sitting in a wheelchair. I've never seen her out of the wheelchair, and I know her from past years. And I said, hey, how are you doing? Oh, okay, well, what's up today? Oh, I just come in from having a cigarette. Man, my mom got jumped right on top of that and said, do you smoke? <laughs> and I walked up to Kim and I said, uh-oh, Kim, you probably started something. But you know what? It was my mom's opportunity to tell this woman, maybe not, I didn't hear her coming right out and saying, you better be saved. She doesn't do it like that. But you know what? God used her at that time. And I thank God for that. So we don't know where we're going to be. And we don't know who he's going to use us with. It might be somebody you've known for years. But thank God we have the freedom. And we have the independence. We can serve God. We can worship God. And we can, God doesn't want you to think that he's going to pound you on the back and say, you better do it this way. You better do it this way. He's given us that choice. And my prayer is that anybody within the sound of this voice, on the tape or wherever, that your choice is that you've chosen God. You've chosen his way, not your way. You know, we all like to have our way. I was, I was probably one of the worst when I was a kid. I would do things, and this might become a shock as you, but I irritated people because I was really headstrong. <laughs> I was really headstrong. But if there was something to be done, I was going to get it done. The sweeper broke. I'd tear the sweeper apart. I didn't know what I was doing. I'd tear the sweeper apart. I can remember putting one back together, and I had a screw left. I didn't need it anyway, I guess. <laughs> but you know what? I was very headstrong. I wanted to be right, and I wanted to prove to, it was probably Bobby, that I was able to fix it. And there's a few other things I've done in my life because I wanted to be right. I don't want to be right like that anymore. I mean, yeah, with a sweeper because I don't want to buy a new one, but I don't want to be right in those areas. I want to be God's way. I want to be his child because you know what? That is the right way. So I'm going to be right anyway, right? Right. <laughs> and every time you hear the word right this week, you're going to remember that. I want to read another script, scripture to you. I want to read John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill, and to destroy. The Lord says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You know what? That just doesn't mean finances. That just doesn't mean materialistically. That just doesn't mean you're going to be smarter or you're going to be better looking or you're going to be thinner or you're going to be what you think you want to be. But you know what? He wants your life to be abundant in him. He wants you to have the confidence to step out of your box. And then he wants you to have the confidence to walk forward and not backward. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to trust and not be afraid. He wants you to take that freedom that we have all got. And he wants you to use it for his glory. It's all about God. He wants you to be able to pick up your Bible, read a scripture, and he wants you to seek the Lord. I, um, I don't know and understand everything in the Bible, but you know what? God's able to open it and show me. And he might show me something today that I've never seen, and I've been a Christian for a lot of years. And he might show me something, but as the person that prepared to run the race and gave up, they lost. They lost. But for the person who continues to run the race, hold on, we're all winners. And that's what we need to, I can't stress it enough, we need to share God with everybody. 
If there's a brother or a sister that you know is hurting, if there's a brother or a sister, or they don't even have to be a brother or sister in Christ, they can be your neighbor that needs something. What does it say? If you have two coats, give one away. If you have five, give four away. I don't know how about you guys, but I could open my closet and give clothes away and I wouldn't have even remembered I had them. But these are just examples of the things that we are supposed to be doing as Christians. And thank God we have the freedom in our country to share Christ. But I'm going to give you this. Even if you didn't have the freedom in your country, I would tell you Christ gave you that freedom to share Christ because that's what he wants us to do. It's been a blessing to be able to uh, bring a message to you today. And I uh, think of these people who are, they're more into themselves than they are anybody else. And I'm trying to think how it was said, but it was said they are more selfish than selfness. They're more about themselves than they are others. I want to be that person, that Christian, that child of God that is more about others than I am about myself. And I want to take all that freedom that God has given me and I want to share it with others. And I believe that God wants us to be witnesses to everyone we are around. I do want to read to you 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. This was a very, it seemed like a very popular scripture when I was searching things out. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Take the spirit of the Lord with you no matter where you go. And if you think that, if you think that maybe the spirit of the Lord's not really too thrilled about going some of the places you go, you better not go. That's, that's as plain as I can put it. Because you know what? I want to take the Lord with me no matter where I go. I want him always to be with me. I want him always to be holding my hand. I want him always to be in my heart. And I want him always to be on my tongue. I want him to direct my path. And I want, him, I want to walk in the path he has given me. Not always do we maybe act as the Lord would be pleased. But I want to act the way the Lord would want me to. I want to make the choices that God would have me to, to make. And I thank God for that. I thank him for the freedom we do have in this country. I know there's limitations in areas where people live. And um, I often say I love walking out and just being able to build a fire anytime I want. And I love walking out and, you know, just being able to do what I want to do. And I know some places you're, you're held back. And I want to put whatever Christmas decoration I want to put on my house, that's what I want to put on my house. I remember this lady told me she had to decorate like the other people in the community. Could you imagine? If you live by me, <laughs> you know what? I thank God. I thank God for this country. And we all need to be thankful for this country. And the Bible says to pray for those who have the rule over you. You know what we should be doing? We are to be praying for the leaders of our country. We are to be praying for the leaders of our churches. We are to be praying for each other. So we need to do that. Let's take this freedom that God has given us and let's take our independence and say, I'm going to pray for that, so whether they want me to or not. Because I believe God wants us all to be in his kingdom someday. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. There will be no services here until next Sunday again. and Or tonight, I'm sorry. We're going to be having our Bible study. We'll start tonight. So come out. I almost took, a, I almost took something out of that book, and then I thought, no, I don't want to take that from Kathy. But there... Read the book. Did you ever hear that? Read the book. <laughs> Brother Brock, Gary. No, that's 4th of July. Oh, okay. So um, 6 o'clock tonight, correct? So come out. Please continue to pray for Bobby. He knows you all are. But one day at a time. One in our houses. One moment at a time. One second at a time. But you know what? God's able. And he has sustained us. He's brought us through this. One day... Uh, when we were looking back over that, the history of what's been going on, it's been eight years now. And um, I thank God for those eight years because there hasn't been a time God's left us down. 
Never once. He's taken us through some really tough times in those eight years, but he's never left us down. He will never leave us or forsake us as long as we hold on to him. And I thank God for that. Does anybody have else, anything else they want to say? Maybe, maybe you have been freed from something that you've never shared. And if you want to take that opportunity now, that's fine. Anybody? If not, Brother Chuck, I'm going to give you 22 minutes today extra so you can beat the line at McDonald's. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for obeying God. Thank you for taking advantage, not advantage. Thank, thank you for taking the freedom that you have to worship the Lord together. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, even the more as the day approaches. Thank you. And God is so appreciated. He, he's our all in all. Let's all stand.